Joining me now on the Daily Ledger page 5 beat from Nashville, Tennessee, hedge fund manager, behavioral economist, and columnist for Forbes, Thomas Landstry. Uh, Tom, when we talk about the Fed, it appears to me that the Federal Reserve, the previous Federal Reserve really, uh, has painted the markets, has painted this economy into a corner in terms of cheap money. And now we're in an environment where interest rates are going up, hopefully not much more, but we are in an environment where interest rates are going up. And this is creating a bit of a calamity on Wall Street that could spread to Main Street, could it not? Well, I guess. I mean, Main Street seems to be of a different world, Graham. Um, as you well know, the economic statistics for the average household were very weak since Obama was elected. In fact, for almost a decade, average household income was below where it was in 2000. It, and average wages, Graham, are, are still around where they were 2000. In 2000, that's 18 years that the average household's basically gone nowhere. And by the way, ever since 2009, when the Fed started their QE program, financial assets are up 300 percent. So average hourly wages are flat and the financial assets are up 300 percent. The only thing the Federal, uh, Federal Reserve policy has done is inflate financial assets. Now, ironically, household incomes are perking up. Average hourly wages, as you saw, we talked about before, are perking up. And now Wall Street is seeing that their financial asset inflation, which is created by the Fed, is now in jeopardy. And, and, it, and it's a little scary. In fact, it's very scary. Well, I want to talk about inflation in just a second, because it appears there isn't much on the horizon. I think that's what you're saying. But when you talk about uh, this, uh, this cheap money uh, in, that was infused into Wall Street by uh, the Federal Reserve, because it had cheap money for many, many years, uh, you wrote me something that said it's created companies that you call zombie companies. What are they, and are they tantamount to a bubble on Wall Street? <laughs> Very much so, Graham. The whole point behind the Fed QE, quantitative easing, was to basically bail out the economy. And what that does is it bails out the weakest companies first. In fact, we looked at the relative performance of those companies with a very high debt level versus those companies with a very low debt level and found that those with the high debt level outperformed over the last 10 years by over 60%. So what that says is these companies were potentially candidates to go out of business because of their debt level and their mismanagement. The the Fed bails them out. They actually outperform good sound companies. And here we are. We have a bubble in financial assets that has lifted the weakest companies. And in, in fact, it's a little startling that 60 percent of NASDAQ constituents, that's the companies that make up the NASDAQ, right. have junk bond rated debt. So 60 percent are junk. So that's a big number. And I think it's a record. In fact, I know it's a record. All right, so it, it, we're in this environment of increasing interest rates, it obviously hurts the market. The stock market doesn't like what Powell is doing. Uh, it can hurt the real estate industry, um, certainly, and it can also hurt the f federal debt because now we are financing much of our federal debt on short-term rates, and when they go up, that means we pay more. But in 2015, we were kind of in a similar situation, weren't we, where the Fed was raising rates, and then it saw the reaction and then backed off, so it could happen again? Yeah, I feel like it's exactly a replay. And even considering it's it's the exact same time on the calendar, which is ironic, but Janet Yellen, as you may remember, raised rates for the first time from a quarter point to 50 basis points in December of 2015. The market started hemorrhaging, and by January, she was backing down. You may remember when um, Jamie Dimon bought $30 million of J.P. Morgan stock in, say, February of 2016. It marked the bottom in the market. That is when also simultaneously Janet Yellen made a speech saying that she was officially pausing in her interest rate uh, you right. know, increases. The market was up something like 30 percent by the end of the year, Graham. Right. Gold was up 300 percent because people were, again, scared then that the Fed could not get out of this situation. And times were not as good back then as they are now. And, and let's be frank, there is no recession. Fundamentally speaking, there's no recession on the horizon unless, of course, Jerome Powell triggers one. Thomas, thanks. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.